Welcome, everyone, to the Prepared Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Austin, and this is actually the first, I guess, uh, officially, right, episode of Season 3 for us. Uh, Last week was Episode 200. Big, big, big deal for us. If you guys haven't checked that out, I I urge you to give it a listen. Uh, I kind of shared a lot of thoughts and feelings on everything we've been doing here, and uh, there's a couple spoilers, a couple teasers that are thrown in for things we have coming down the pipe. So if you're a long-time listener, worth checking out. If you are a new listener and maybe don't know as much about what we've been working on here over the past, uh, I don't know, three and a half, four years, uh, might be a, you know a cool insight into what we got going on in uh, the background behind the scenes while we're working on our content and things. Uh, been an interesting week for me. You know, I was out of town, traveled for work, which I don't often do. Uh, it was a good opportunity for me to connect with uh, some of my coworkers, and it turns out they're like-minded individuals. And those of you guys that are in the know, you know what that means. And uh, always a little bit nicer when you're able to have a more relaxed conversation about stuff and not have to be so guarded and things. But it was it was a good time. Happy to be back, though. And uh, certainly in the last week, we've had a lot of things going on. Now, if you guys have been listening for a while, you understand that we do these uh, I, these Sunday sit rep episodes, right? We do these once a month, and it's just a, an opportunity to um, <clears throat> to check in, right? Let's talk politics. Let's talk uh, let's talk some current events, right? Let's uh, check the pulse, you know, so to speak, on what's going on in the world around us. Now, it's not often, but on occasion, we do release more than one, you know, Sunday episodes uh, being what they are. Uh, it's usually once a month, but if it's something important, like what we're experiencing right now, and, and I had a couple of people reach out, hey, man, are you going to release on this? Are you going to talk about this? Hey, I think you should do this. Uh, and it was something I definitely had been, you know, thinking about and and looking into. And I like to try and do at least some research before I come at you guys with these, uh, you know, uh, current affairs reports and and talking about stuff that's going on in, in the world and what could impact us here in the United States. Now, obviously, a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today with the attack uh, by Hamas on Israel, that's going to have some long-reaching impacts, right? It's not just going to be what it does to the United States. It's not going to just be what it does to Israel and the Middle Eastern region, right? This is going to have, it's just, it's it's the way the world works now. Electronically, we're attached to each other and everything that one country does ends up in, in at least some way, shape, form, or variety having an impact on countries on the other side of the world, whether you're friendly nations or, or enemy nations or somewhere in between, your trade partners or not. Everybody works with everybody in some way, shape, or form. We are just, as a planet, right, we are, we are at that point, and it's hard to get away from. So I thought it would be important to jump on and talk about this, you guys, share my thoughts, uh, share some information, share some facts, uh, probably get into what I think might happen next, and how this could have some some very far-reaching and very unfortunate implications for what you and I all experience on a day-to-day basis. So we're going to get into, um, we're going to get into all of it or as much of it as I can, you know, at the time of this recording at the time of my research, right. I, that's, that's kind of the deal with these, um, I guess these evolving issues, right. Is that every 10 minutes, it seems like some days there is something new that is coming out. There is a new piece of information that is dropped, uh, via Fox News or CNN or uh, you know whatever whatever media outlet that you subscribe to, right? There is more information that's being brought forward. So at the time of this recording, I tried to get the most accurate information and the most up to date information that I could. Please understand that you know at the time you listen to this, maybe several hours, maybe several days removed, and it may have changed. It may have updated. So uh, please bear with me in that respect, especially as we, as we talk about you know, some of the lives lost and things like that did do my best here, but didn't want to keep waiting to release this as it is ongoing and it it is developing. Um, Before I get into all of that, you guys, I have to say thank you. There's a lot of people that make this, these efforts uh, possible. And, and I have to say thank you, you know, our Patreon patrons for one, you guys are huge. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash prepared underscore mindset underscore pod. You guys can check out all of our exclusive content there. We have drills. There's going to be more targets going up. Uh, one of the things I did get to work on while I was in my hotel room uh, on this business trip was because I didn't have you know personal access to a, a computer. I just had my work laptop, so I got to 
uh, do some of how I do my best work, which is just scribbling doodles and uh, drawing out drills and things like that. So got some pretty good ideas. More of that's going to be dropped on our Patreon page, and you guys can go ahead over, check that out, and every cent that you guys drop on Patreon to support us comes back to bring this content to you, man. Uh, bring more, do more, uh, help us do everything that we want to do, and then some. Um, also worth noting, we did, you guys can check out our link tree through our Instagram page as we did just drop a storefront today. Technically it was yesterday, but officially announced today, uh, via social media that we have through Spreadshirt, we have a storefront. It's a first step, uh, you know, maybe it may be our, you know, do all end all may not be, uh, but we have some good options up there for shirts and hoodies and mugs. Uh, stickers, things like that, as again, as a starting point, because we've had a lot of people reach out, hey, when you guys can get some hats, when you can get some shirts, hey, I noticed these other places, they have this stuff going on, what are you guys doing? So we're going to work on that, we're going to work on getting some more designs out and things like that, but go ahead over there, check that out, a very small piece of those comes back to help support what we do, wanted to make sure that we kept prices as low as we reasonably could, to make sure that you guys have the option to pick up a shirt, I think there's a customization option, so if you want to throw something like you know, work hard, train smarter, be prepared, you know, our, our catchphrase, our motto here, you want to throw that on the back of a shirt or the back of a hoodie. It does allow you to do that with no additional charge, which is kind of nice. I ordered one for myself. Uh, check out the hats and stuff. It's all, all good stuff that comes back to, uh, support what we're doing here. Again, that link is in our, uh, it's in our, it's in our link tree there and it's on our Patreon page too, as a public post. So you can get through, uh, get to it through both of those platforms. But in addition to that, we have some really, really good industry partners that help support what we're doing here so that we can keep bringing this educational content to you. And with that, I have to first say thank you to Custom Night Vision. You guys, you can head over to their website, customnightvision.com. You may have known them better in their, uh, let's say, previous life as uh, kosher surplus, but same guys, right? Customnightvision.com. And they have everything you're looking for. If you are looking to get into night vision, there's been some posts circulating uh, from, I believe it was Phoenix Ammunition, which is a company here in Novi, Michigan, actually, that took a course and was able to converse and connect with some Bortac people and find out, hey, you know what? The cartels, they all have what we have. They have night vision. They have lasers. If you're th- feeling like you guys are behind the power curve, you probably are. This is where custom night vision comes into play. This is where they can help you get better equipped and become more capable in just a few days' time. Yes, it's expensive, but honestly, these guys have some of the best prices in the industry. And no, I'm not just saying that because they're a partner. I've actually shopped around even before we worked together. That is why I went through them to purchase my D-Ball A3 laser because they had, by a couple hundred dollars, the best price on the market. If you guys are looking into a single tube, looking to get into some binocular night vision, like some RNVGs or something, they have all of that stuff in stock and they have a chat feature built into the site. If you have questions, if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what you can get away with and what you can't, hey, I don't have a ton of money. Do I really need to bite the bullet and go into white phosphor or is green phosphor going to be okay for me? What's the biggest difference between a a photonist tube an L-bit tube, an L3 tube. What do the specs mean? The team at Custom Night Vision is there to support you, give you advice, and help you navigate through this journey as it's a large purchase. They understand and they want to make sure that you are happy with the product that you receive. They hooked me up with a pair of 1431 Mark IIs with some L-bit PH tubes. Absolutely awesome units. Guys, their handpick options don't even take any longer than the, the other options that they list on their site. And you can actually get a picture of what the tube image is going to look like before you commit to purchasing. It's a great, great company bringing great products to all of you. CustomNightVision.com. Also, shout out to the team over at HRT Tactical Gear. They're actually down in Ohio where I was this week. Did not get to connect with those guys, but still thankful very much so for their support here at Prepared Mindset. Head on over to hrttacticalgear.com and guys, just check it out, man. You can navigate, put, you know, poke around on the site, see what they got going on. They just did a huge restock on their AWL, uh, the, the weapon, AWLS, I'm sorry, their weapon light. They have that really cool uh, multi-directional uh, push button that you can use on the end of the light. So whether you're uh, a C-clamp grip guy, you need to reach over from one side of the rifle for you know offhand shooting and stuff, you can actually remove that too, I found out, and there's a regular just push button behind it. So it's a really innovative design. The lights actually put out quite a bit of performance uh, compared to some of the more legacy offerings that are out there on the market. And they make a ton of high-quality gear, like plate carriers, back panels, placards. They hooked up one of their arc belt systems. 
it's outstanding, super lightweight. I was actually, I was blown away at how lightweight the inner belt and the outer belt itself was. It's one of the Tigris designs that's becoming so popular. These guys are really at the forefront of what's going on with nylon gear. Head on over to hrttacticalgear.com and pick yourself up something today. Thank you as well to the team over at 100 Concepts. Guys, if you haven't heard of 100 Concepts, I believe you may be living under a rock. Uh, Their work is really, really good. They're making a lot of waves in the industry because they're offering some really, really good solutions for people at a price point that everybody can afford. Everybody. What's the first thing that you hear all these influencers talk about? White light. You need to have a white light on your rifle. After a sling and maybe an optic, you need to have a white light. What does a white light do? Well, it's got a reflector in it, which can actually create as many issues as potentially may solve for you. That's where their light cap comes in. If you're running a magnified optic, that's where their scope caps come in. If you're running a a dot and you just don't want your emitter or the reflection of the front glass to give you away, that's where their hex cap line comes in. Guys, 100 Concepts is developing creative solutions, again, at an affordable price so that everybody has access to these ideas. Everybody can run this gear, and everybody is much better off and much more capable with their products. Their company motto is do good, be dangerous, and live free. Guys, head on over to 100concepts.com. Check out all the good stuff they have to offer for you, and there is more coming. Can't say what it is. I know it's on the way, and I know you guys are really, really going to dig it. And finally, thank you to LARP Labs. You guys, head on over to LARPLabs.com. They make some of the most primo computer cut 3M vinyl wraps for your lights, your optics, your lasers, your PVS-14 units. And you might be saying, well, why do I need to do that? Well, here, I'll tell you why. Because do you want to take a rattle can to your $3,500 PVS-14? I mean, if you want to roll the dice on that, I mean, cool. But if you don't, if you're like me and you are very much concerned about taking care of some of this equipment or voiding a warranty if you have a certain company's laser that uh, they don't like spray paint... This is where the LARP Labs vinyls come in. Guys, you can get them in M81. You can get them in Multicam Tropic, Multicam Arid, Ranger Green, Coyote Brown, whatever color you need. They have tons and tons of solutions for EOTech, Hollow Sun, SIG, Cloud Defensive, guys. And it's 3M vinyl. It's not a sticker. It's not going to peel and leave some goop all over the place that, you know, collects you know, cat hair and dog hair and just, you know, in general annoys you. This is really, really high-end stuff, and they use it for, you know, outdoor vehicles like competitive rock crawlers. Head on over to LARPLabs.com. You can even use discount code PREPAREDMINDSET for 10% off your order. So huge shout-out, big thanks to all of those companies for all of their continued support of everything that we're doing here at Prepared Mindset. <clears throat> so now, get my notes out here because... Uh, and if you guys have listened, or if you listened to the last episode, you know, like, I don't, I don't usually go off a of script. Um, I try to just speak from the heart. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to stick to a script, but I do like when we're talking about stuff like this, I do like to have notes. And I took about three pages worth, honestly. There's a lot to get into here. Um, so basically, if you've been, wa- if you've been following this, you've been watching the news, right? You probably know, you understand that the attack started on Israel uh, about a, a little over a week ago, okay? Saturday, October 7th, approximately 6.30 a.m. I believe that's Israeli time. Um, that was basically when the, I believe it was the rockets were, were being launched. There was, uh, I mean, it was a coordinated effort. I think I heard on Fox News that they determined that, I don't know how you determine this. I assume it's through vetting of intelligence sources. I I know that the United States intelligence community is probably working very, very diligently on this as we are strategic partners and have been strategic partners for a very long time with Israel. So, you know, and that would make sense. For something as coordinated as this, for a militant group like Hamas to conduct an attack against a country like Israel, it's not just, you know, uh, it, it's not one of these, I don't want to say small deals, because any loss of human life is a big deal, right? But it's not one of these where, hey, five bad actors got together and filled, you know, uh, two minivans full of explosives and drove them into an Israeli government building or something like that, right? It was a coordinated effort with a lot that was involved. Now, one of the things to understand and uh, to to kind of, consider right when we look at something like this is who is Hamas where did they come from it does become a little bit confusing because 
it seems like there's new terror organizations uh, or, or religious organizations. I guess it depends on which side of this conversation you're standing on, which it used to be just there was one side. Terrorist equals bad. Um, now in this country, which we'll get into this a little bit later, but now we have people here protesting against Israel. They deserve the attacks. We shouldn't bomb them. We shouldn't attack them. Israel shouldn't attack them. They should just let them be. Hey, all the stuff they did, yeah, that's bad, but why do you have to do, why do you have to go destroy them? Literally things that were said on Fox News by protesters in New York City. The idiocy, the idiocy of people is just, it's fucking uh, incomprehensible. I, I cannot believe that People like that even have the brain cells to be able to breathe. Uh, I, I mean, if you take the this side or that side out of it, hey, I know that they killed a bunch of people and you know butchered babies and raped women, but we're going to sit here and defend that. How do you defend that? Regardless of which side of the argument you're on, how do you defend that action? I, I don't. To me, there's just not. There's nothing. There's nothing. Like if this is an actual military action. In a lot of instances, you leave the women and the children out of this. In most instances, you know, honorable warfare, um, if there is such a thing, typically you leave them out of it. Or at the very least, you do what you can to keep them as far out of the collateral as possible. Deliberately targeting them, that's a whole different kind of evil. Um, It's, listen, at at any rate, I don't want to get into the horrors of war, but uh, it, it is something that's ongoing, and there's a lot of people that are now throwing the conspiracy flag on this and saying, well, show me the pictures. Show me, like, really? You think mainstream media is going to be allowed here in the country with, was that the FCC, is going to allow you to broadcast images of raped women and butchered infants? I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. You can find them on the internet. There are pictures out there. I unfortunately had some sent to me. Like, hey, look, at this is what's going on. This is terrible. Uh, so, uh, Hamas was formed at any rate, uh, in 87, actually, uh, it, it means zeal in Arabic. So when we talk about religious zealots, people who are very affirmed in, uh, their religious beliefs and that their religion above all else is the only way to live life. And the only one that should be, you know, successful and bountiful in this world. We do see that, um, <clears throat> we do see a lot in the Middle East. It is unfortunately tied to religion, like the Muslim religion is an example, right? Because we've seen a lot of terror groups uh, that through their their particular, and I'll say this because um, had this discussion, not not all Muslims are, are bad people. That, that's, I mean, just like not all Christians are, you know, extreme right-wing hardliners, you know, <laughs> uh, but you do see a lot of extremist groups tied back to the Muslim religion because they have very uh, extreme interpretations of their religious text. There are people that, that are more liberal with their interpretations of that within, obviously, the spectrum of that religion. And that's true with all religions, okay? There are people that, like with Catholics, Christianity, right? You got the uh, Christmas and Easter Catholics where you only basically go to church for those two events and for funerals and stuff and weddings. Um, and then you have people that go every Sunday, they're very firm in their faith and, and it's a, it's a part of their daily life. You have a whole spectrum there. Um, so Hamas was formed in 87, uh, I believe it was on December 10th of 87 in response to, uh, an Israeli army truck crashed into a car carrying Palestinian day workers that they killed all of those workers. Um, so, and it was created by former members of the Muslim brotherhood. And I don't want to make this whole dissertation on the different, terror groups throughout the the Middle East, uh, there's been a lot, you know, ISIL, ISIS, uh, the Taliban is considered a terrorist organization by some people. I mean, there's a whole lot you can get into and you can, I mean, Hamas, Hezbollah, it, it, the list is ever growing, right? Um, but uh, we're, just to give you some context on where Hamas came from, that's where they came from. They were literally born of this hatred uh, of this uh, anger towards the Israeli military. That's that's literally their origin. They started before I was born. To put that in context, I mean, it's been 36 years now almost, almost 36 years since they were formed. So this isn't like a, they're not just a blip on the radar. They're not just a, you know, it's one of these pop-up groups, right? They're, there's some history here. And uh, the news was actually showing footage of some of their training camps and they're f- pretty well organized, um, as a lot of these organizations tend to be. Um, so on October 7th, shortly after the attacks, uh, Mohammed Deef, commander in chief of Hamas's military arm, Al Qassam Brigades, uh, 
he released a video. He claimed responsibility. He let the world know Hamas did this to Israel. Um, they're, they're the ones that fired the rockets, right? The estimates that were released, right, on the Israeli side of things was approximately 2,200 rockets were fired at into Israel by Hamas. Uh, now, of course, the other side of that, Hamas is saying, oh, we fired 5,000 plus. We fired over 5,000. Um, and, and part of that's a propaganda thing. If you guys, uh, Fry the Brain is a book that I think a lot of people in this space have read about guerrilla warfare and things like that. If you, you know, read that book, um, it does give you a fairly good insight into how a lot of this works and why things are done a certain way. And this, it, this won't be the first time I reference that text when talking about this. And maybe this is this, everything that's going on here is the catalyst to get you to pick that book up. There are sections of it that are, that are a little bit dry, uh, but as we experience things like this around the world, I think that's a good read as it will probably help you to connect some ideas and understand why certain things are done. Um, the propaganda campaigns are huge. Oh, we launched 5,000 rockets. 5,000 sounds an awful lot more intimidating than 2,000, right? It's over double. So, of course, one side is going to try and downplay the damage and the other side is going to try to, you know, uh, inflate it. The truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. It's almost an arbitrary point because it doesn't really matter. The the destruction and the loss of life is what matters. Um, But it it does show you that there's beyond just the actual war fighting and the actual combat and conflict. There's a fair amount of politicking that even has to go on between these these two sides in this conflict here. Um, so now, like I was saying earlier, we have large sections of the, you know, U S citizens, cause we are largely stupid. You know, I, I mean, I love my country. Uh, I know a lot of you guys listening, we're, we're patriots, right? We love the U S however, you do know what I'm talking about when we say that we have stupid people here that allow social media to steer and direct <laughs> every facet of their life. So when Russia invaded Ukraine, Oh, Solidarity with Ukraine. I stand with Ukraine. I got to put the stupid fucking banner on my goddamn Facebook photo with the Ukrainian flag to let everybody know that I'm I'm on the right side of this and that I support people. Just like years ago, everyone put the the French flag filter over their photos because of the twelve people or something that died in the terror attack in France. Ironically, the same people that are doing all of that, uh, you know, are the ones that want to talk about gun control, and those people die, I'm pretty sure, from a minivan that ran over a bunch of people, or, you know, stabbings or something, I don't fucking remember. But we, we basically get all of our information from mainstream media and social media, and when one of those banners goes up, and we hear, oh, this is terrible, people are dying over there, I just have to, you know, I gotta go with the flow, I gotta follow the crowd. We do very little research, but, um, so... <laughs> We actually have large sections of the U.S. citizenry that are supporting Hamas. I was, you know, I was talking about that earlier, and they're actually condemning Israel. Oh, Israel isn't the rightful owners to the land. They're this, they're that. And these are the people that haven't actually done any research on this. I'll be the first one to admit, I haven't even done that much research on that component of this. This battle, this argument over the rightful inhabitants of Israel, Gaza, right? This has been going on for this is not a short-lived debate and a short-lived conflict. The Israelis and Palestinians have been fighting each other for control of this nation and this land for, I don't even know how long. It is a very, very, very long and very storied conflict over there. It is massive. What's concerning here is that, you know, there's a diplomatic route to take with these things. And when we had President Trump in office, he was trying to help address this. We actually had peace in the Middle East for the longest sustained period in, I think, what anybody can remember, honestly, right? So now this is all popping off. I don't even know what the U.S. is doing, short of I think we moved a warship. I think we moved a carrier over there, um, you know, uh, in the ocean, obviously, (coughs) to at least give us the opportunity to respond if we needed to intervene on Israel's behalf as they are a strategic partner with us. We do, honestly, I believe the U.S., funds uh, like a majority of their defense budget every year. I, we give a lot of foreign aid to Israel. Um, so, but what really bothers me about this is now we have American politicians who are now coming out and speaking against Israel. They're actually supporting the terrorist actions of Hamas. It's like your brother comes up and for no good reason punches you square in the dick and you go, what the fuck? 
Who the fuck does that? Why would you just fucking do that? And then your dad walks up and goes, you deserve getting kicked in the dick or punched in the dick, whatever. And you're like, why? And they go, because you should have been standing where they wanted to stand. I mean, I know that's an oversimplification, but like, seriously, you're going to support the assholes in this, that they're doing all this evil shit. I mean, we can have commentary and discussion around, you know, the, inha- the who's the rightful inhabitants of the land. That's a separate issue. But to condemn Israel and all of this and say they deserve what's happening, these are, and again, it shouldn't surprise anybody, the fucking idiots that are the ones in our government, our elected officials, somehow elected officials, that are coming out saying this shit. Rashida Tlaib, who is from Michigan. She is one of the representatives elected from, I believe it's the Dearborn area here in Michigan, probably because of her ethnicity and probably because of her name and whatever. She got elected. She has been absolutely dreadful through her you know, term in office. I cannot wait to see that woman voted out. She's ignorant. She does not speak well. She does not support any logical issues. And she is a hardline Democrat. She doesn't think for herself. She just pulls the party line. And the other two names I'm about to throw out here aren't going to surprise anybody either. With Ilhan Omar from Minnesota and <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio Cortez from New York, that everybody acts like, oh, the, I forget what they, the click or the, the crew or the club or the. They, the fact that the, these politicians, these elected leaders in the United States government, right, their job is to lead the United States people, and they have, like, a gang name. It, it, it's fucking stupid. And these are honestly some of the worst spoken and stupid people you will ever see in, in public office, aside from, like, John Fetterman in Pennsylvania, um, who I think may actually be mentally impaired. But I digress on that. Um, so they are calling the Palestinians the rightful inhabitants here. Oh, also, here's another one, too, because our media, again, loves to put out their political beliefs and make political comments and commentary. So you have shows like The View. While most of us, I, I would venture to say, don't watch The View on any, because we're not, you know, like retiree aged women. Um, you've seen people like Whoopi Goldberg on The View talking about how they're going to take the AR-15. I want it. I'm going to take it. You know, her her bullshit commentary on uh, gun control. And I know there was one good clip that circulated. I think it was Kurt Russell that was on there being interviewed and really, really upset them. Uh, you know, enjoy Behar for saying that he doesn't think that we should have gun control. He is pro 2A and things. Um, but Sonny Hostin on The View came out and compared these terrorist organizations. And in the same breath, in the very same statement and sentence even, to are these terrorist organizations like Hamas and like the Proud Boys that we have here in America. The fucking Proud Boys. So basically, here's another fucking uneducated jab at the pro 2A community and taking every opportunity, as is normal for them, right? Business as usual, for them to attack the 2A community by comparing a pro 2A group that was at the January 6th protests, peaceful protesting, right? Which is guaranteed in our constitution and protected in our constitution, as we saw with all the assholes that were burning fucking major cities during 2020, during the COVID lockdowns and screaming for social justice, but only we're being labeled. Like, and I'm not a member of the Proud Boys. I want to be very clear on that. But like the 2A community is always, always, always fucking labeled as domestic terrorists. You don't see groups like Black Lives Matter overturning cars and throwing Molotov cocktails and shit like that. All the assholes and Chop and Chaz up in the Pacific Northwest, they weren't labeled as domestic terrorists. And they were throwing firebombs at police stations. Which that, by the way... And we'll get into that too. That actually is out of the guerrilla warfare handbook as like textbook activity is attacking local law enforcement, creating chaos, which is literally what these fucking organizations did yet because they stand for quote, social justice and social equity and, and things that are supported by the left wing government. That's not terrorism. That's just them standing up for their rights. It's fucking asinine. I can't, I, it's, I can't, um, so at October 8th, right, at this point, we're a day into this conflict, 30 Israeli police officers are killed, like I just said. Again, fry the brain, it's a great text on this, but, and there's films, uh, it's Battle of Algiers, which is an older black and white film, but it, that's, honestly, that gets shown a lot in regions of the world where they're trying to instruct people on how to carry out guerrilla activities, and yeah, you attack the peacekeeping force, you attack law enforcement, because What's going to happen? Well, all this is going on. The military is being dispatched to try and address military issues, right? 
They're trying to contain problems at the border. They're trying to address, you know, heavy cells of fighters. But for the embedded individuals, the small cells, who's going to address those? Your local law enforcement. So 30, uh, over 30 Israeli police officers are killed on October 8th. Uh, at this point, Hamas has taken hostages. They're letting that be known. October 9th rolls around, and we have confirmed that at least nine Americans who are in country have been killed. It, it's a popular tourist destination to go see Jerusalem. Uh, a lot of Christians, Catholics make that trip to go see that. Uh, here in Detroit, right, I've said before I'm a huge Detroit Lions fan. Uh, our One of our defensive captains, Alex Anzalone, his parents were actually in Israel during all of this, and it was something that the local media was reporting on somewhat heavily uh, while they were work- he was working right to try and make sure that his parents got safe passage out of the country and were headed back home, which they are by you know now, thankfully, uh, but I digress. Uh, October 10th, that number goes up to 14 Americans killed. Another, a, a day later, we have October 11th. 22 Americans are killed and 17 more are still yet unaccounted for. Now, guys, I get that that's four days removed from today. Um, We don't know what the numbers, I don't know, I don't have an accurate count. I have not looked that up yet uh, at the time of this recording. Now, as of October 13th, Israel's ordering a civilian evacuation of northern Gaza. This is where they, as a government, right, they, through their intelligence gathering, this is where they're anticipating to be a large amount of fighting a large amount of conflict. They want to be able to clear the area as much as they can of civilians to avoid that collateral damage and then be able to then, in a relatively open battle space, right, be able to take the fight to their enemy. Now, in the same turn of events, Hamas is ordering Palestinian civilians to stay put. And that's because this makes the Israeli Defense Forces' job a lot harder. If they have to be the the, uh, the voice of accountability uh, they have to fight around these civilians. The propaganda piece comes into this. This is huge, right? They have to fight around civilians. They have to avoid civilian loss of life. They are the government. They are supposed to be taking care of all of their citizens, whether the citizens support them or not. That's how democratic government works, right? So they want everybody out of there so they can fight this enemy. The enemy, who is a much smaller and less technically advanced force, they want those civilians in place because it makes the IDF's job a lot harder to have to fight around them. Whereas if they are fully evacuated, anybody you find in there, there's this overall assumption that those are war fighters. That's There's an assumption that they're a combatant. Anybody walking around with a rifle is assumed to be a combatant. Whereas if you have civilians mixed in, you don't know. They could just be somebody trying to get their family out. It creates confusion. It creates problems. It breeds more difficulties by having those civilians mixed into everything that's going on. So this is all still obviously ongoing and all still developing But beyond this now, there's further developments kind of adjacent to this problem with Hamas. And that's that Hezbollah, which is another, you know, terrorist organization that operates mostly out of the the Middle East, right? But Hezbollah is now getting involved in their siding with Hamas against Israel, and they are attacking uh, on the Lebanese border. They're, you know, which uh, not the same, uh, uh, not the same weight, I guess is the word I'll use, uh, small arms attacks against the Israeli Defense Force on the Lebanese border, which, okay, small arms, rifle fire, things like that, less concerning than rockets, but still a problem, because we know Hezbollah is a large organization, we know that they have resources, and we know that if they do fully commit to a military action against Israel, this gets really dicey really quickly, because now you're fighting a battle on two fronts. You're fighting both Hamas with all of their resources and all of their following, and you're the same with Hezbollah. So it becomes a much larger and more concerning issue. Um, so it's something to keep. That's definitely something that you have to keep uh, an eye on. Um, initial reports with all of this, which were since disproven, but something worth mentioning is uh, since we've, I mean, I've been very critical of the Biden administration. I'm not going to deny that. I think a lot of people rightfully so have been very critical of the Biden administration. One of the moves that they made was that they, uh, unfroze $6 billion of, uh, of money to Iran and Iran has some, you know, documented ties, some well-documented ties to Hamas and, and supporting that terrorist organization. So of course the initial, you know, jump to it from, 
the early onset and some rather uneducated, maybe even I'll say emotional responses from from uh, from people, from commentators, much like myself, right, is that, oh, that's our money. We gave Iran $6 billion to use to go ahead and attack Israel. Now, that's been disproven. Those funds have actually since been, uh, you know, refrozen by the U.S. Um, so it's disproven. We refroze the funds. And also, like I said, this attack, uh, they estimate to have been two years in the making. We, re- we, we unfroze those funds like a, a month or two ago, uh, which please check me on that. I, it may have been like six months ago, but it was not two years ago. So that that's not that money. All right. Uh, still concerning as Iran does basically give $700 million a year to Hamas. They do support them from a national standpoint. That in itself is also concerning as we have more strained relationships with Iran There's several countries in that region that we have strained relationships with. We did see those to get, I will say, somewhat better um, or or more controlled is probably the better term. We had a more controlled relationship with some of those countries with the previous presidential administration. The foreign policies that are being put in place and being enacted by the Biden administration, my opinion here, if if, you you know more than I do about this and you want to correct me on it, I welcome that information and I certainly welcome that discussion. But I don't believe that our foreign policy here is doing anything to help that region, and I don't believe it's doing anything to help this country. Um, now, the other thing worth pointing out here, since we were talking about December or October 13th, I'm sorry, uh, Friday the 13th, so just a couple of days ago here, uh, was the, they're quoting, calling it the uh, Day of Rage, right, where the these uh, Palestinian terrorists, Hamas, put out uh, basically a memorandum globally to their uh, followers, I guess, uh, <coughs> those that their supporters asking them to lash out and attack, uh, you know, the, I don't know the exact verbiage. I assume the word infidels was probably thrown in there because that usually is how it is. Um, but basically, Hey, that, you know, there was a lot, and there's a lot being shared. There's a lot being shared on social media by people saying, Hey, if you leave the house today, maybe not a bad idea to practice your uh, your preparedness, to practice your planning, to have that go bag in the car, to carry that extra magazine with you, be, you know, to carry medical with you, because we don't know where this is going to pop off. I know that several law enforcement agencies nationwide here were working with, uh, you know, religious uh, gathering places, churches, mosques, what, what have you to ensure that precautions were being taken. There was a sort of hyper-awareness of these types of things, and there was a lot of protesting on Friday. Like I mentioned, the Fox News bit, I was watching that uh, before I did a live feed on Friday, and some of it's just absolutely insane. I have people screaming at the reporter to show them photos of the dead babies. Oh, this is a lie. This is all being made up. The Israelis are at fault. You know, I'm not saying that Israel, that Israel is not uh, at fault here. I'm, I'm not saying that they don't, they could, the, there's things they couldn't, you know, do to make this better. They could negotiate. I, I mean, I don't know. But I will not, I cannot condone the killing of infants and the raping of women. That's just not, and, and if they think that's made up, I've actually, I've seen videos of like, you know, IDF fighters, women, right, being bound and, you know, uh, thrown in vehicles and things like that, covered in blood and what I assume is their own, you know, uh, bodily fluids, you know, figure that out for yourself there. Uh, there, there's, there's evidence out there of what's going on. It's not, it's not something that's being, uh, created. It's, it's happening. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack with this, but people need to, they need to do their own goddamn research. These protesters gathering in Baghdad and Rome, and of course here in the U.S., New York and L.A., the liberal hubs of our nation, right? They're protesting, they're supporting Israel, or they're denouncing Israel, I should say, and supporting Hamas. They're literally supporting a terrorist organization, and they don't give a shit because they have talking heads in the media telling them that Israel's bad. Again, they could be bad at a lot of things, and if there's stuff I'm overlooking, like I, like I urge somebody, shoot me a message, let me know. Uh, but I think we're, you know, uh, really missing this and are missing the mark here with these, these people protesting is ironic is the people who call everything racist, who want to talk about, you can't say this cause that's racist. You have to give more job opportunities to black people because if you don't, that's racist or you can't support police because all police are racist. Like they've used the word racist 
you know, or racism ad nauseum to the point where I don't think we even know what that word means anymore. Ironically, these are now the same people who are promoting anti-Semitism because fuck Jewish people because of what the news told me uh, or because of what social media told me or because, you know, fill in the blank fucking reason. And it's just, it's laughable because hating all white people because they're white is the same thing they claim was happening because, you know, oh, because someone's black. Racism is racism. That's why I hate the term reverse racism. It's like, no, it's just it, racism. It, it goes both ways, right? And anti-Semitism is bad. Uh, I, I don't want to like bust out the let's go back to the Holocaust argument, but like, hey, uh, the the kind of like widespread hatred of Jewish people that kind of caused a lot of issues at the beginning of the 1900s there. Um, yeah, that that wasn't a really good look, right? And to sit here and continue to hate on the Jewish people, like uh, I don't, I don't know if that's really uh, right, and it's very concerning for me, honestly. I think any level of hate is concerning. This is very much concerning. The, the just the widespread and like unawareness, and the willingness to just hate people because of their religion. Like you don't know them, you don't know their families, you don't know what they're about. You just assume that you know because of whatever religious affiliation they have. That's like hating me because I'm Catholic. Do I go to church every Sunday? No, I don't. I, I, I mean, could I be better about it? Yeah, I, I would like to be better about it. I would like to work on my faith a bit. You know, nobody's perfect, right? <clears throat> um, but you would just hearing that I'm Catholic, you would assume, well, okay, you must be a right wing extremist. You must, you must be anti abortion. You must be, you know, check off every box. And you don't know people. You don't know. People are allowed to have opinions and beliefs that are against that of their religion and political affiliations. But we've become so divided in our country here that that we just loop everybody into this or that. There is no in-between. We've done everything we can, it seems, to kill the gray area, the in-between, right? So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what that is going to mean for us as a country. Well, I, I do fear that if we commit any resources to this conflict, uh, it could have some problem. It could have some some really adverse impacts. <coughs> excuse me on on the United States. Keeping in mind, we've already sent like what, I don't even I can't even keep track of how many billions of dollars we've sent to Ukraine allegedly to support their. We've had that fucking idiot, their Zelensky, come over here in like BDUs and fatigues and shit to come visit the White House. Dude can't even he doesn't have the decency to wear a fucking suit. Like, he's on the fucking front lines fighting as the president of that country, right? Yeah. Come on. Seriously. But he's been over here begging for money, talking about how we got to give him more, give him more, give him more, which now it just appears that it's a giant money laundering front. Now, I don't know how true that is, but, like, we've been pouring money there. And these aren't loans. It's not like when our country was in hard times, we borrowed money from France. We paid that shit back. It was a loan. This isn't a loan. This is These are aid packages. And you have all of these left-wing... Po uh, politicians lobbying for this for reasons which none of us can fucking understand. We don't stand to gain anything. And if our country were in a better place right now, I'd have a I, I'd, I'm sure we'd all have a lot easier time swallowing the, the eighty billion dollars that we fucking gave to Ukraine. And then you have the you have the Pentagon coming out and freaking saying that oh we did a miscalculation. We actually sent them an additional six billion dollars. Like how do you miss that in your math? Like, how do you miss $6 billion? If I missed $6 billion in my job at work, I'd be fucking fired. And the company would be done. More than likely. Probably not. But it, that's that's a what I'm saying. It's a pretty big rounding error. You know what I mean? So now we've already committed ourselves. I mean, whether we're still committed or continuing to provide any kind of relief or support or whatever have you, we're still pretty well fucking committed to that conflict in Ukraine. Because we've, we've we sent all of our money there. The valuation of the dollar is diving day after day, it seems. And now we have this conflict in Israel. And we, like I said, we are a strong strategic partner for the last 50 plus years with Israel since like the Carter administration. So there's there's a lot of money being sent there too. And of course, this happens. And then what you mean, you watch defense contractor stocks jump up. General Dynamics and, and a lot of those other companies, they're just Jumping through the roof. Hey, we saw a 14% increase in one day on their stock price. Because now the assumption is if there's global conflict, that's good for business, right? And you can get into some of those like tinfoil hat conspiracy theories about, oh, well, uh, the 
the powers that be drive these conflicts because then it drives, you know, their profit margins. It gets kind of scary when you start looking into it because it starts to make an odd sort of sense about why there's always a conflict in this world. Not because humans, I think, inherently want to fight each other, but because we inherently want more wealth and you have some people that are just able to help push this in a lot of directions. But if we start committing resources to this conflict, if we, I mean, God forbid, if we send troops over there, what's to stop us from committing troops to Ukraine, sending our sons and daughters of the United States to go fight in wars that we have nothing to do with. And this is what kills me when people want to yell about the, we need to kill the America first Donald Trump approach to foreign affairs. No, we don't. We have enough fucking problems here that we are still not addressing. We should not be sending borderline a trillion dollars, whatever, to other nations in aid. How about you spend that money on revamping the VA? How about you spend that money on infrastructure here? Here in Michigan, we still have power lines above ground. It, the wind blows too hard. People here lose power. And that shit happens in the winter, too. My parents went six days without power and without heat because the power line went down. And it went down for thousands of people, and they just didn't have the resources to get that fixed in time. Dad had to go out and drop $1,000 on a generator so that the basic essentials could be covered. So you didn't lose all the food in the freezer. So you had heat. You can keep the house above like 52 degrees. I mean, come on. These are realistic issues. I mean, you you want to talk about issues here in Michigan? Hey, oh yeah, our governor Gretchen Whitmer, who was thought to be a front runner for the the vice presidential uh, nod. It was Kamala Harris, obviously, but everyone thought she was going to be on Biden's ticket. She's a hardline left wing, you know, uh, asshole. And oh, she campaigned on it's time to fix the damn roads. And we are just now, after a term and a third, term and a quarter, whatever, of her being in office, we are just now seeing widespread projects to address the road issues here in Michigan, around Detroit mostly. And, oh, wouldn't you know, it's because the NFL draft is coming to town, and they don't want the world to see how much of a shithole Detroit is and how poor a job she's doing of managing this state, not to mention any of the COVID problems that her and uh, Dana Nessel created for this state. But I I mean, that's obviously out of scope of this discussion. In terms of immediate impact, I think we're going to see even more divisiveness via social media. We're going to see even more infighting. I believe that honestly, at this point, the way this goes, people, this is what is wanted. It has to be what's wanted. Everyone's got to be on this side or that side. We want this infighting. We want right wing versus left wing. We want Democrat versus Republican. We want Israeli versus Palestinian because it fits the narrative. If everyone's fighting about this shit, they aren't paying attention to the other shit that's going on. Gun control laws that are being passed. Spending packages that are being pushed to the government. Right? Watch what the left hand's doing so you don't see what the right hand's doing. That all shit. And that's not left or right, you know, politically speaking. That's literally just because we have two hands. Okay? Uh, I believe the longer that this conflict goes on, obviously it's it's tragic in the loss of life. It's tragic. But I do believe that if we start, like I said... We commit resources, we send troops, we send weapons, whatever. It's a problem. And it's a problem because as we're concerned about how this is going to go in this country, people are panic buying. If we're sending all of our ammunition over to that country so they can fight their fucking war, what happens here? That's right. There is less supply of ammunition for American citizens to buy. And this is coming just as we are actually fucking seeing ammo prices start to sort of, for some brands, return close to what they were pre-COVID. At least for like five, five, six, and two, two, three ammo. So as this is all going on, they're going to start shipping out millions and millions of rounds of ammo, which drives the price up and it drives the availability down for ammo here in the United States. And and now who suffers? The United States citizens. Who suffers? The pro two A individuals. And. Everyone's just okay with this because we have an administration running this country that is anti-Second Amendment, doesn't think Americans need access to guns. Apparently, every other fucking country in the world does because we're going to support every other conflict in the world, which, by the way, is largely being fought by fucking armed civilians. It's absurd. But the American people, the anti-2A idiots that, and I'm not saying if you don't own a gun that you're on the wrong here, but people that that just think, oh, we need to ban all guns, and there's a lot of those fucking assholes running around. But they'll sit here and scream to support it happening in every other place in the world. Well, if we do this, how much longer until we're one of those places where we're in armed conflict fighting with each other or fighting against an invading nation at this point as weak as we are on our southern border, 
I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds of fighting age males coming in from not just Mexico, they're coming through Mexico, from places like Syria, which, by the way, is a place where terrorism pretty much thrives. So when we talk about why we should be concerned, which we talk about why we should be alarmed here, why we should be stocking up on ammo, why we should be looking at supplies, why we should be questioning our, our leadership and our law enforcement and trying to work on planning in the event that shit goes really fucking weird here, we're not so crazy anymore. We're just not. 20 years ago, yeah, I, I would say you probably had a, a fairly ge- decent argument for people being, you know, this way. But now, the way things are going, it almost seems like this is what is wanted. So, I, obviously, I'll continue to try and do my best to monitor this situation. I implore you all to also just, I mean, keep up on current events, right? I, I, I mean, it's going on in our world. We, we're strongly tied to Israel. This is going to have an impact on us either way. So I hope there's a, there's some kind of a resolution. I hope they're able to just bomb the shit out of these people and be done with it. Um, but as we've seen with media campaigns and with wars, it, it's never it's never fast. It's never as expedient as we would like it to be. And I do believe that we're gonna. It sucks as we're heading into the holiday season here, right? People are gonna have to make some hard choices. Nope, we can't travel to go see family this Thanksgiving because it is just too expensive. Hey, we have to cancel that large dinner that we host for our friends because it is just too expensive. I I, I mean, things are getting bad here. The auto unions continue to push for strike because we have large companies not willing to pay their workers after, you know, taking the bailouts and suspending their cost of living raises. Uh, You know, talking to my dad, that's something that they're watching uh, day to day now. It's not even every Friday anymore. Now it's just, hey, at any given time, we're going to close another plant until we get what we want. And that's a, that's a whole other ball of yarn that you can unravel and get into for a lot of different reasons on both sides of the argument. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Hopefully there's some insight here. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't really know what to make of this. Uh, I do think that it does offer just a little bit of justification for why being better prepared is an important endeavor in your life especially with the possibility that we could be facing some attacks here in the United States. It could happen. I don't know. I hope. I pray to God it doesn't. But if you look at enough of these things, the borders, the long reach of some of these radical religious ideas, like uh, there's just, there's enough there to be concerned about. So just guys, keep your heads on a swivel, be aware. And like we always say here, you guys work hard, train smarter, be prepared. 